There's always an exception. Like, I oh, will, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And then I would come back here and I'd say, well, we can do it this way. And I'd go, no, because our rules are written this way. And this is the way we use our building. And it was, yeah. So that, you know, I didn't walk away with this being sort of tangible. I could imagine it. But, um, I could, I think just getting a sense of the, the, the national Wasn't one, wasn't another one. The one that was trying to see what dates they were available. And that's what Holly, you know, did that too. She was available off orders. Yeah. 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 And then I oh, also said no. y'all went about coming. Well, I've got, I've got a little bit of change. I'll get you know, yeah. 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 Come next Tuesday afternoon. We'll try to meet with him so we can plan the retreat based on what everybody chose. I was so glad we're here. It's really, I just feel like everything that we do, we all do during our year trips, it's just none of us need to be moving the other. You know, we've got to move everything that we need. Yeah, we're really really sure. More than ever. I'm going to be tired of sitting Thank you so much. Exactly. What we'll do at the end of this discussion is that Charlotte Carlson has asked that we spend a little time talking about insurance and share some information about insurance companies that actually are reimbursing at schools. There are a few, but we'll have a discussion about that. Our next presenter is with Action for Kids. It's the PBIS, which is Positive Be Behavior Interventions and Supports. Um, Lori Poston is with Action for Kids, and we're excited to hear her presentation. Thanks, Lori. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm always in front of educators. Always. Um, I want to start out, and I didn't include this in my slides, but I want to share with you just a little, very brief history of how we got to where we are now with Action for Kids and PBIS. Um, when the Systems of Care grant, uh, the part of Action for Kids, when the grant was written, um, Marilyn Copeland, our project director, when she was with Safe Schools and Healthy Students with Jonesboro Public Schools, had some experience with our Illinois partners in PBIS and uh, wrote that in to the cooperative agreement. And I'm so glad that she did because I now have this job. But what it has allowed us to do is to work to embed the system of care principles into our schools. And it was kind of a logical fit for how do we engage our schools and our educational partners in this systems of care venture. 
um, which has been quite a ride, let me tell you. Um, so what I try to lead off with is, yes, I'm a therapist. Yes, I work for a community mental health center, but PBIS is not a mental health initiative. Uh, it is simply a way, it's a model that we have followed and, and have made it work in our schools that have come along voluntarily. There haven't been any schools from our standpoint that we have said, you've got to do this. If there have been any mandates, it's been from within their district and it's been from an administrator that says, we need this. We have got to do something different to reach our kids because we're losing them. So any mandate on any of my schools is, is self-imposed, okay? Um, we just kind of did this by word of mouth. And I started backwards and I just trained buildings that wanted to do it. They didn't have to have a significant amount of district commitment. It was simply a school building that was saying, I understand this really isn't gonna cost me a lot of money because you've got this grant and all this money. You're gonna train me, you're gonna support me in my building to implement this. And yes, we give you three to five years. That's basically what I asked for from them. And in that first year, we trained 10 schools. The next year, we trained 10 schools. And in between, we had about five schools we were afraid we would lose if we didn't train them, so we trained some in the middle. So by that second year, we had 25 schools that we had trained, and some of them did drop off and we lost them. Um, but at this point, beginning year six of Action for Kids, I'm starting off the year with 36 trained schools in my four counties, Craighead, Mississippi, Lee, and Phillips, uh, in 11 districts, okay? Four of those districts have committed district coordinators. That means that initially I provided a little bit of monetary support to them to identify a person in the district to lead this effort to provide on-site coaching to the buildings in that district that are implementing positive behavior supports because it's more than what I can do and my job's gonna be gone when this grant's gone. So I needed districts that wanted this to sustain to find somebody in that district that knew it, that understands it, that gets it, the big picture as I say, and could provide that ongoing support. So districts are seeing the, the benefit and they're wanting more of it and they're starting to ante up, which is great. Um, and I just kind of made some notes that I knew I didn't have in my slide, so I'm gonna give you all of that on the front end and then I'll go into my slide. Um, schools wanted to know how to fund this ongoing and so I'm going to go ahead and talk about that first because it's usually a really big question. Very first school meeting that I had, and I won't name the district, Marilyn and I walked in. I was brand new. We walked in and sat down, and the superintendent looked at me, and guys, this is a direct quote. He said, I don't want to hear a word you've got to say until you tell me how much this is going to cost me. <laughs> and I almost fell out of my chair. I was scared to death. And actually, that district has come along, and now we have implemented district-wide in that school. And they're in the Delta in serious poverty, um, you know, when you talk with schools that work from a deficit budget every single year, you've got to get that part. And it scared me, but I knew he was always going to be honest with me in our, in our talks. So, interesting uh, exposure for me right, right from the get-go. But um, schools can use their professional development money to pay for some of the conferences and the things that we do. Um, if they are in an Action for Kids County, anything that I do for them, there's no charge. I come to their building and provide continuing education if they need it. When I do organized training, they can come and attend. All they have to do is pay for the substitute in their building if it's during the school year. If it's during the summer and they choose to do a stipend for their teachers, they have to pay that. That's the only cost to them, okay? Um, some of the expenses that they incur within their buildings, a lot of schools have done fundraising. Um, because as you hear about this, there, there are a few expenses that come along with reinforcing behavior and we talk about our tickets and our token systems and the things that they do to reinforce positive behavior. The schools raise the money themselves to do that. And that's something that they want to do because they want to do more than what they can do with the, what the school budgets them. Um, and they also rely a lot on community partners for donations. And in a lot of my communities, their partners have donated significant amounts of money to make this work because they see the benefit not only in the school, but how it affects the community as well. So they're getting a lot of good connections within the community outside of the systems of care piece and the partners that are needed to be engaged in that part of it, okay? So there's just a lot of good connection and collaboration going on. Um, I'll just go ahead and get into my slides. Okay, what is PBIS? 
positive behavior interventions and supports is a it's an approach to creating a positive school climate okay and I know that you all are focused on how do we implement integrate mental health into our schools where we came from in most of our counties with action for kids most of our schools already had school-based mental health as a part of their districts so that piece was already there so for, for, from my standpoint it wasn't about how do I get those supports in the school it's how do we get it consistently how do we make sure there are supports available to all children regardless of insurance or payer source or resources within that district and how do we get things consistent across that, that school building so that what we do benefits all kids not just our mental health kids not just our special ed kids all children okay so we want to improve our classroom and our school climate by being consistent in our approach as adults by being proactive and preventative by teaching appropriate behavior telling kids what we expect from them rather than focusing on when they don't do what we want them to do we try to shift our approach in all of our interactions with our kids from that to that positive standpoint we want to decrease our reactive management of problem behaviors and this helps all kids but it especially helps kids when you're dealing with mental health issues when we are reactive as adults and uh, we try to control our classroom in a reactive and, and an aggressive way kids respond to that and we're less likely it's likely to keep them engaged in education or we have less instructional time with them so we really support our teachers and give them the things that they need to manage the behavior in the classroom appropriately uh, we want to improve the support in the classroom for our mental health kids and what we were seeing was we had a lot of kids that were pulled out for therapy um, what do I do with them for the rest of the week you know they come back from the therapist office and this is what teachers have said to me they come from from the counselor or from the therapist they have a piece of candy and a smile on their face and they gave me absolute grief all morning long <laughs> so why am I as the teacher supposed to believe that this is going to help now granted you did have those teachers also who believed in it fully they saw the benefit they saw the need that kids had for mental health supports and they they, they wholeheartedly felt like it was a benefit occasionally you had that one that just really wasn't sold on it um, so what we wanted to make sure it was that the teachers not only felt like every time this kid is acting out I can't I don't want to just send them out to go see their therapist every day when they're acting out what can I do in my classroom to increase those supports for that child so that they stay in the classroom <coughs> um, we learned and we've taught our teachers that sometimes when I send that child out of my classroom every time they act up I'm reinforcing negative behavior Go figure so when our teachers realized that what they were doing was creating more of a problem by just sending the child out they wanted to know okay what can I do then to keep them here and we teach them strategies to do that so really increasing the support for those kids that had um, emotional behavioral disorders and how do we integrate our academic and behavior approaches with this there are a lot of things RTI our PBI triangle is the same as the RTI triangle it's about implementing interventions for kids either academically or behaviorally based on data using the the things that science gives us so that we know that we're doing the right things that are effective for kids and then how do we know it's working if it is how do we continue it if it's not what do we need to do to make it work rather than spinning our wheels and things that might or might not work for those kids okay we have um, our circles that we look at basically we have our four areas that we focus on in our implementation um, the systems are the things that we put in place in our buildings to support our staff good um, easy way, ways things that they can understand they always know what to do to request assistance on a student uh, making sure that those referral forms is that if that's our procedure what are our procedures to make sure our staff know exactly how to get help when they need it rather than well I know I email the counselor for this and if I want mental health I've got to do this we want to streamline these systems so our staff says I need help I call this person and they do what I need to do to get the ball rolling okay does that make sense for our kiddos we want to make sure that we put practices in place so that we are teaching children what's expected we're reinforcing positive rather than focusing on negative and the things that we put in place to help our children be successful are the practices that we focus on implementing in our building and we do everything with data academically you know when your kids are successful you have grades you get testing 
We do the same with behavior data. We look at problem behavior data so that we know what we need to do in our building to create change.